shot three, take one. So what year were you born in? 1951. So my guess is you were here when the when the first man touched the moon. Yeah, that was oh. se well, that was 72, wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> well, no, it, well, I was still in England. How did you get to Sydney? To Sydney? Yeah, to here. I emigrated from England with my parents. Oh, okay. Um, Did you come by um, train or...? By plane. Oh, plane? And it, believe it or not, back in the old days, it took two days to get here, even though we flew. Yeah, because the planes weren't strong enough, is my guess? Well, I just keep stopping to refuel oh. because from England to Australia is a long way. Yeah. yeah. When we first came to Australia, we were sponsored by a housing company because in those days you had to be sponsored to come to Australia. We lived at Balcombe Hills in one of the sponsors' houses, which we have, my parents eventually bought. I used to like playing uh, football. They call it soccer in Australia, but we call it football in England. What I used to like about football, we had a good team, I used to like winning. Uh, I used to do athletics. Uh, I've even played uh, netball against the, the, the girls. You, we used to play soccer, football, but uh, the teachers, at this, we were only young, the teachers decided, no, we'll put the boys against the girls. And we won. What did you want to become when you grew yeah, up? Yeah, as I grew yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, as you grew up. Uh, well, when I was real young, I just wanted to be 25. Because I thought 25 was, that was old. And then when you get to 25, you think, oh yeah, I want to be 40. And then when you're 40, you want to be 60. And when you're 60, and so on and so forth. Just keep going. What's your favourite hobby? My favourite hobby would be trying to understand used computers. <laughs> what was technology like back then? Very limited. Uh, it's not like today where you've got, I mean, everybody these days has got a mobile phone. I often wonder what they used to do before there was uh, mobile phones invented. But uh, technology is so advancing so fast that today they release a new product, tomorrow it's obsolete because technology is so quick. It makes some people better and some people confused. Uh, I think the technology, the way we're going, if they keep it simple, it's very good. What's your favourite thing about technology? It's instant. You press a button and there it is on the screen. Yeah, I think we all like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, back in the old days, you press a button and wait five minutes. So what's your favourite thing about Weasley Ted Butt? It's pleasant. They go out of their way to make it that way. You know, make you welcome, make you... I mean, we've got good food, we've got a good room. They've just finished doing the floors. They've painted the rooms. My favourite thing here, when we do things, what we do, we'll, we'll, like, we'll go to, say, Bankstown Airport Museum and have a look. Oh, OK. So right? you would go out? Yeah, we actually go out or we go to, it's called the Viking Club and have a meal. Or we go to the Catholic Club in Lidcombe and have a meal. Yeah, I think a school without an excursion will be a, we won't be a school at all. Same with the retirement village. What things do you not like about Weasley Ted Butt? <laughs> Curried prawns. You probably like curried prawns, don't you? I actually never tried them. <laughs> you haven't tried them? Yeah, as long as they don't have peanuts in them, I'm good. Oh, you're allergic to peanuts? Yeah. What, what advice, advice would you, would you give, give to younger people like yeah. us? Yeah. Oh, be yourself. Don't yeah. try to be somebody else. Be yourself. Also, how old are you? I didn't ask. How old am I? 68. Well, that's I'm only very young. Old. I find that old. Ben! <laughs> oh, no. You're only as old as you feel, and you can't escape it. <laughs>
1st of March 1950. Who was in your family? My two brothers, myself and my parents. When you were our age, what did you enjoy doing most? Having Sunday lunch with my parents and going to the beach. Uh, I like going for a swim. Uh, I sunbathed for short times. I went to Normanhurst Boys High School and uh, before that I went to Normanhurst Primary School. I started my first job was when I was 14 and I lasted for two weeks and I that was just while I was at school and when I was when I was 15 I I was in the Navy for a short time and then I and then I got another job as a uh, as a sort of an executive for Wrigley Chewing Gum Company. When I was 16, I had another job for a place in the city where they did liaison work for the government, sort of a semi-government job. And when I was 17, I was a clerk for the water board for 10 months. Do you have any parts of your family after 16, like a family or marriage? I had a... Um, a wife when I was 19 for three months and uh, during that time I made Lynn pregnant and uh, she, had, she had a son and a daughter to me, twins, fraternal twins, and I, uh, Graham and Susan. What is one major change in the world that has appeared in your lifetime? The death of President Kennedy in 1963. The beginning of the Vietnam War, which I didn't partake in. Why? Well, I was too young when it was beginning, and uh, I was in the ballot for, for, to be called up when I was twenty, but I missed out. I missed out in the ballot. I wasn't. I wasn't called up after that. So I think it was a good thing that I didn't go there because I would have could quite possibly have been killed or maimed or or made a paraplegic or something like that. So. I was glad that I didn't go there, really. What was technology like when you were a child? Well, television was introduced in 1958, I think, and uh, we, got, we got a television set the same year, I think. And uh, my father bought a, uh, a new car when I was 13, 1963, and. Uh, it was a good car, it was a powerful car. It had an automatic transmission and uh, it was a uh, Falcon and it was a good car. My father uh, drove it pretty fast sometimes. What do you like about your life in Tabit? Uh, oh, the facilities are fairly good. I've got my own bathroom, everyone has their own bathroom. A lot of the activities. What did you enjoy the most? I ha I enjoyed working for the liaison company in the city when I was 16. I used my intellect to the full and uh, enjoyed it most of all. I was born in Italy and my family immigrated when I was eight years old in um, 1957. I just want to say I have two vivid memories of Italy, or a few actually, Legoland, some memories in Legoland, another memory of me chasing birds. Mm, well, you won't get too many birds in Italy no more. Um, mm. I went back in 1983 and couldn't see any birds and I asked somebody and they said, oh, we shot them and ate them. So, no wild birds left, apart from pigeons. There's a lot of pigeons in, in the cities. They, they, don't, they don't eat pigeons? No, not no, much. Okay. Yeah. What was your favourite thing to do, like when, like when you were younger or...? Um, yeah, mainly like riding me push bike, swimming. I like swimming, oh, swimming. a fair bit. Oh. Yeah. Things like that, picnics and that sort of thing. Now, what's your favourite food? Oh, 
probably uh, lasagna's pretty nice. I really want to try some now. Mm, um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, you want to try some. What was technology like back in your days, like in, in Italy? Um, well, we had virtually none. Um, no, no technology? No, okay. I only come from a little village. Closest city would have been, I don't know, about 50 miles away. That's yeah. quite a long way. Yeah. 50. I left school at 15 and went to work in a um, fruit shop. In, oh, in a fruit shop? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't too bad at school. and uh, But unfortunately, I left, uh, <clears throat> I left school a bit early and uh, um, didn't have um, opportunities that I might have had. Um, by the age of 20, I was a railway guard in Western Australia and I got called up for national service when the Vietnam War was on. Oh, okay. And done two years in the army. In the army, it was pretty, pretty good. Yeah, you get to meet a lot of different people in there. But once you get all your um, training done, it's just, uh, just like another job. Okay. Yep. Uh, only now and again, you get um, London would be weekend duty, that everybody gets that, so it's all right. And um, I went back to Italy in 1983, but I didn't really like it that much because um, it's a different way of life over there. And it's uh, big, wide open spaces here, and um, uh, it's about the best country in the world, I think. So, yeah. I advise any young person to travel and see Australia because it does change from time to time. And um, there's pretty nice places out there to visit. And um, yeah, travel was, um, I advise any young person to do a fair bit of traveling. Yeah. I always try and um, you know, be truthful with people and um, don't do anything to anybody that uh, you wouldn't like to be yeah. done to yourself. So, yeah. But always try and be honest, you know, yeah, yeah. especially with your, your friends or your immediate family. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the best advice I can give you, just be honest. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, is that well done, it? Guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Where were you born? I was born in Brill. It's a country town north of Sydney. It's about 600 miles north. Did you grow up there? No, I didn't grow up there. I was a little baby when we came to Sydney. We, the first place we lived in Sydney was an inner city suburb called Darlinghurst. It was near King's Cross. What did you enjoy the most? What I enjoyed most growing up was going to school. I enjoyed school. I was a good scholar and went to Padstow Park Primary School and I was ducks at that school. Playing sport was my main interest, but, but I used to play a lot of sport and we used to play a lot of the games for which we'd make up ourselves. If we didn't have a lot of the games, you would play one game called fly. You get five sticks, put them on the ground in a row, and then you step in between them, and then the last one you step and you jump and move one of the sticks out, the furthest one out. There was always outside activities at the school. There was no, one, no, there was no sitting down with the iPads and playing games with no such thing never heard of. You played games, but they were physical games. These days, that, I don't think that happens. I think that's at school. You don't play any physical games? Sometimes you do, but not very often. Mainly on the yeah. your phone, isn't it? Yeah, that's why the digital age is so important these days. What was the biggest change in technology in your life? It didn't exist. The biggest thing we have was that adding machine. You put the numbers in if you want to add up the different columns of figures and, that, and pull the lever, and that would go back, and then you that, that was an adding machine. That was the biggest thing in technology in my day. 
How did technology help you in your life? It hasn't helped me at all because I've never been involved in it. I don't know how to use a mobile phone. I'm a, what they call computer illiterate. I don't know how to use a computer. All these things is too advanced for me. Um, what is your proudest achievement? Proudest achievement? All the jobs that I had, I had a, quite a few different jobs. I enjoyed working because it's what you put in to the job, you take out of the job. No matter what the occupation was, you, you found some enjoyment in that job because you did your best to achieve the highest accolades from your fellow workmates. How much people do you have in your family? I've got two nephews. That's my brother's two boys. They're both growing up, they're both married, got children of their own. I had a brother, but he died of a, he had bowel cancer when he was young and 52 he was. He was a deputy principal of the school. And he had one motto, which every child is good at something. He always maintained that, that no matter what, you might, mightn't be good at maths, but you'd be good at English. Or if you weren't good at English, you turn out to be good at something else. But these days, what they call tradies, people that don't have a, don't go to university, but they go straight to an occupation. They could, might be a plumber or electrician or a bricklayer, and they end up earning more money than these IT people. There's big money in trades these days. So you don't have to be an excellent scholar to be successful in your occupation. Not saying don't go to university, but you don't have to go to university. How would you describe yourself to someone who wouldn't know you? I would describe myself as a happy-go-lucky person. I like meeting people, I like talking to people. I like new, new things. I like, I like painting. You see that painting over there, the horses? Yeah. Can you see it? I did that. I like painting and like drawing. Oh. The, that's one of the things that the, this facility encourages you to do as hobbies. And uh, that's one of my hobbies. I get the chance to paint or draw. I like to draw with charcoal. You ever draw them with charcoal? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you have? Yeah. That's a good medium to use charcoal instead of pencils and paint. You're an amazing artist. I never learned to paint or draw, but I would like to. Yeah. One of the ladies here said she liked that painting. She's going to take it and put it in her room. And I said she's welcome to it. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone growing up? Uh, the one thing I'd say is always respect your parents, no matter what they might say, it might sound silly to you at the time, but they've been through everything that you've done there. Your parents are not as old as what I am, but we must remember that whatever you do, they've done it before. So they know what's going on in your mind, okay? Thank you for your advice. Thank you. Clap it. You're done. Right, take a seat. Where and when were you born? I was born in Baghdad, Iraq. Why did you come over to Australia? I had my sister here. She came five years before me. And of course, a lot of good talk about this. Really. I think I was 21 years old. I'm very happy to come to Australia, but I'm very sad I left my family, my parents there. So, you know. What was your job? How did you? I am a builder. See, I built, I built this building. Apartment. Were you ever like scared when building? Apartments are scary. If it was so scary, then why, why did you choose to be a builder? No, I, I never said so scary. But it is scary, you have to be careful. Besides, if you don't do something because it's scary, 
That means you won't be able to do nothing because everything is a scale, generally, uh, in life. Did you have any other jobs than a builder? Well, I, I did work, uh, do business, kebab shops. I used to do kebab and uh, I was very good at it. Why do you like kebabs? Number one, if you see, look here, you don't ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> I like food, and kebab, I, I like uh, the taste of kebab. Did you ever get married later in life? Yes, I got married, I have three kids. Where did you get married and what attracted you to your wife? Well, I got married here in Australia, in Redfield. And what was the second question? Um, uh, how, how did you get attracted to your wife? Ah, uh, that's secret. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do for entertainment as a child? In, in my childhood, in my place, there's no such thing entertainment. There is fights all the time. As a Christian, you'll have fight all the time. Uh, the, the country is Muslim. Most people are Muslim, but there is a Christian. Because of that, you have to come, how you say, tough, or otherwise forget it. You are always crying that. That wasn't with me. With me, I was tough. I had to. You, you're lucky, you are an Australian, in Australia, and that is the luck itself. Because Australia as a Christian, is a democratic country and all that. That, all this, is nothing like that in, back home. Is there any advice you would have for us? The first advice, the biggest advice I, I tell you, would be, be cool. Through being cool, you would steady life. A few things come to you, you might keep them as, as a good lesson to you in life. At the moment, you would, both of you, you would uh, think something and not necessarily you're right. It would be good to follow your elder advice, dad, mom, brother, sister. I can tell you a million things. <laughs> but this, in my opinion, are the best advice you have. And be helpful. Very important to be helpful. And this is if everybody is helpful, you know, we're going too far now, but the world will be better. When and where were you born? In Portsmouth, England. Is it co like cold in Portsmouth, England? Yes. How cold was it in Portsmouth? Minus 15. Wow, that is cold. Why did you come to Australia? Because we were having trouble. My father was getting a bit rough with people and wanting things. And my grandfather said it's better if you left England altogether. We applied to come out here. How old were you when you left England? 21. Did you do any education back then? Well, I, I was in the Air Force a certain age from 17 to 21. You got, you were called up. 
What did you do in the Air Force? I was just a clerk. What did a clerk do? Oh, he, he was, uh, if they were, wanted to do something, they come in to us and we decided what's the best for them. When did you get married? Well, my um, first wife was told by the doctor that she had to part from me because I just come out of hospital being treated for the wrong thing I had, which they found out 20 years later what was wrong. How, how did your wife help you through that period? She said, will you come and live with me? She, she said, better than just living with me, why don't we get married? How did you guys meet? Well, I, I was staying with my, my relations and her auntie was married to this fellow. He got me a jo job working at the electric station, coal station, to, to make electricity. That was the first time I met her. And then, then it went 10 years later, we were both, she come down to Newcastle. I was at Brush Farm and I was walking across the schoolyard one night and Bob had met me there. And then when I was down at the riverside, Bob just walked down and uh, tapped me on the shoulder. And um, he asked me, was I Colleen? I said, yes. And he was quite happy when he met me. But there was a doctor one time, he got me, tried to get me in the hospital. And Bob decided that before lunch, he came down and got me back and she said, are you Colleen? And I said, yes. He said, I'm taking you up because it's lunchtime. And I was so happy to see him Bob just come to the rescue in time to get me out. And um, Bob kept me in hiding until he left. What else do you like doing together? I like, like colouring in, in pictures. They are, are something, something that doing it makes you feel that you are doing something for people. People can look at pictures a different way and think it's different. And you show people that you can do, do it quite easily if you do it properly. How did you stay together for such a long time? Well, we, because we love one another. And, and that's what we're doing at work. God wants us to be together. Together. And show, we can show people that you can have a happy life being married. Well, some people don't believe this. She's a companion to me through. Jesus. So we can be together always with the love of God.